the growth of every Christian is depend on how they approach the word of the Lord. And today you have opportunity to listen to the word of the Lord from the mouth of his servant, Apostle Jesus Shama. Sit back and relax yourself and prayerfully listen to the word of the Lord. I believe you are going to be blessed. He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Are we together? The capacity to be witnesses is predicated upon the coming, the presence, the remaining of the Holy Spirit. This Acts chapter 1 verse 8, officially Acts chapter 2, began what we call the dispensation of the Spirit. In the Old Testament, it was God for us. While Jesus walked upon the earth, he was God with us, Emmanuel. And from Acts chapter 2 until Jesus returns, it is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, God in us. Jesus said, he shall be with you and then shall be in you. The presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer and backing that believer up is a guarantee and the surety, the confidence, the basis of our believing that such a concept is not just a figment of man's imagination, not just some parable somewhere, but God's desire and intent and will happen before Jesus returns. Acts 10 38, Peter speaking in the house of Cornelius, he said, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Even Jesus, the son of the living God, was anointed with the Holy Ghost and then anointed with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good. Remember when he walked upon the earth, the men in those days testified that they had never seen it in this fashion. Remember that these were people who had honor to history. They had heard about the things that Elijah did. They had heard about the wonderful manifestations of the Spirit. They heard about the mighty hand of God, the works of God in the life of the Israelites in Egypt. But when Jesus showed up, they saw a dimension of the hand of God, his teachings and the demonstration of the Spirit in his life was phenomenal. They testified that they had not seen it in this fashion. And the Bible tells us, Paul speaking, that he went about doing good, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for the simple reason that God, God, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, was with him. So with these three reasons, it's important for us to be convinced beyond any shadow of doubt that God's idea about greater works is true. And you must position yourself by faith that I will be part of those that God will use in this end time to birth this greater work agenda. If you believe that, shout a believing amen. amen. The second thing I want to discuss is the controversial word greater. For many years, it troubled me until the Lord gave me light in this scripture. And for many believers, there have been all kinds of theological debates as to whether he meant greater. Most people would say it was a, some figurative statement. Why would Jesus say greater works than these? It was as though he was demeaning himself. It was as though he was expressing some form of limitation. And you would not imagine that the son of the living God, God incarnate, will speak as though he were limited. So what was his idea about greater? It's important and I trust God that together we'll solve this problem once and for all. This is the value and the benefit of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. The Bible says he will guide you into all truth. If the Holy Spirit does not open your eyes to see, you will only end up getting confused the more you study scripture. Hallelujah. I asked God this and he answered me in a very profound way. And I want to give you directly the answer that God gave me. I said, Lord, why would you say that greater works? What does that mean? Greater works than what Jesus did? Whereas the Bible already told us in Acts chapter 20 and verse 30 that there were many other miracles that Jesus did which were not documented in this book, John 20, 30. That many other miracles did Jesus which were not documented 
in this book it says 31 but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God that in believing you might have life through his name so we know for a fact that there were many other miracles Jesus did only God knows what other phenomenal miracles he did yet in the with the awareness of the miracles he did that we do not even know he said greater works than this shall you do let me tell you for a fact that if Jesus said greater he really meant greater hallelujah it's only that our idea of greater is what needs to be probed and edited in light of scripture but if jesus said greater he was not missing words he meant greater so journey with me to scripture as we explore the implication of this word greater why would jesus use the word greater was it that he was limited is it true that he was limited the Bible tells us for a fact that there were certain miracles that Jesus could not perform and it does not credit it to the limitation of his ability. It credits it to the unbelief of the people and yet Jesus seems to be expressing limitation perhaps for the first time that there is something you will do that I could not do. Two reasons. Number one, the first reason why Jesus used the word greater to express what the saints would do listen to this while jesus walked upon the earth he largely did all that he did alone while jesus walked upon the earth he largely did all that he did alone but today all believers can carry out this mandate and have access to the spirit bringing greater efficiency so when jesus says greater works he also meant greater efficiency because while i walked upon the earth i was the only one who had the spirit without measure to the degree that empowered me to do what i was doing now every believer in christ can have access to this spirit are we together now when jesus walked upon the earth if he was in nazareth he could not be in caesarea philippi at the same time jesus himself revealed that he was limited and oftentimes he would say let us go over to the other side as god he had the ability to be omnipresent the word being everywhere but while he was trapped in a human material body he could not be everywhere so when he says greater works it is greater works because of greater efficiency number one as a result of the widespread distribution of the spirit of god that it will no longer be trapped in a single individual but that all believers according to the prophecy of joel are we together that i shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams and so on and so forth your young men will see visions the first reason why that statement is true and why he used the word greater is that while he walked upon the earth he largely did all he did alone and the bible tells us in acts chapter 12 and verse 24 Acts chapter 12 and verse 24 except sorry John John 12 24 please my apologies John 12 24 except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies the Bible says it abided alone but if it die it can bring forth much fruit that means if you hold a grain or two of corn you can eat it it can't feed a family it cannot even eat you you I mean I mean you cannot even eat it you swallow it like a pill and that's the end of it but when you plant that same corn you are going to have at least two years of corn as a result of that and you can now if you plant that one again very soon you're going to have corn enough to feed the nation and Jesus is saying I am alone if I die I will bring a multiplier effect because my death would give the saints access to the life of God and access to the Holy Spirit greater works because you will not be alone it will be a widespread manifestation of bodies that have been available to be used by God even by the Spirit you have that down now the second reason is what is most important as to why Jesus used the concept of greater and I want you to listen very carefully and let this enlighten your mind indeed the first time the Lord told me I was I was 
I was amazed that it had been in the Bible and yet I did not have the eyes to see. Now, here's what I wrote. In spite of the many miracles Jesus performed while on earth, there was one miracle which was the greatest need of man he could not perform. There was one miracle that Jesus could not perform, not before the cross, not after the cross, not until after the cross. Out of the many miracles that he did, he calmed the sea, he casted out devils, but there was one miracle and that miracle represented the greatest need of man. He did not have the ability and the allowance to perform that miracle because that miracle will demand death. The one miracle Jesus could not perform, all the saints can perform it today. Greater works. Jesus himself, watch this. He could forgive sins. He told many people, your sins are forgiven. But Jesus could not give anyone eternal life before his death. That one miracle, Jesus himself, there was no message to preach that men would believe. There was no blood of the remission of sins, yes. There was no death on the cross, yet. There was no resurrection, yet. So that miracle that represented the answer to the true state of man could not be performed by Jesus before the cross. So when he said greater works, he meant that the believer will have an advantage and be able to communicate the gospel in its entirety. Are we together now? Every problem Jesus solved while he was on earth was a symptom of man's real problem. The real problem of man was that he was alienated from the life of God. He needed more than healing. He needed more than bread. Are we together now? Everybody Jesus healed still died. Everybody Jesus fed still went hungry. But that one miracle of reconciliation it demanded that he would have to die, pay the price with his blood. Let me show you three scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. Then we'll jump to 19 and 20. Watch this. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13. It says, who had delivered us, watch this now, from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, it says, in whom we have redemption. How? Not by a pronouncement. Every other miracle Jesus performed, he performed it with his word. But redemption happened beyond his word. His blood and his life had to be, had to be shed for man to be saved redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin 19 for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell verse 20 now it says and having made peace how through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say paul is speaking whether they be things in earth all things in heaven reconciliation was not a miracle that happened just by a divine pronouncement because the Bible says the wages of sin is death it says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin so when Jesus says greater works than this shall you do he meant that you will be empowered to in partnership with the Holy Spirit attend to the greatest need of man he was going to make the way available, but will become advocates of that truth, bearing witness to the truth. Next scripture, Ephesians 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 7. Paul again is speaking and he says, in whom we have redemption. Are you seeing it clearly from scripture that true redemption is only through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches, the abundance of his grace so Jesus worked many great miracles but there was one that could not be performed in his earth work the price for that miracle that happened to be the greatest miracle representing the greatest need of man could not be performed while Jesus was alive he had to die go to Hades shed his blood he had to resurrect by the glory of the father for that miracle to happen to men 
and today we thank God that that miracle is possible that men can be reconciled to Jesus that we who were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, the Bible says, we have been brought nigh through the blood of the eternal covenant. That we can come boldly to the throne of grace today and obtain mercy, find grace to help even in time of need. Are we together? So when Jesus says greater, it is important for us to know that he calls it greater because number one, the spirit of God has made the presence of Jesus unlimited. It is amazing that while I am here preaching, there is some preacher somewhere declaring the counsel of God. There is some evangelist somewhere, the same Holy Spirit sponsoring this spiritual advocacy. There is someone in his room watching a message right now. There is another person doing a one-on-one -on -one evangelism. There is another person reaching people in the village. There is another person speaking in French, another in Spanish, another in English, Hausa, another in Yoruba, another in Igbo. And all of these men, Jesus could not do all of that alone. But now greater works can happen because the Holy Spirit has made this possible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Imagine if you were the only one who had the ability to preach the gospel just one out of eight billion people number one you will most likely die either of demonic attack or exhaustion are we together when you read about the world's revival one of the tragedies of men respectfully speaking like Ivan Roberts who was the pioneer of the world's revival the um, history now tells us that that man literally he died of exhaustion and fatigue because there was such a move of God the fire of God was spreading you know across his region and then he had to be at the helm of affairs managing the move of God at that point and for sheer exhaustion I think out of all God's generals recorded as we know he was the one who died youngest and it was largely it was not just of a demonic attack we presume he was just exhausted as a human being can i tell you every time you stop men from accessing the life and the power of god and accessing the relevant graces that help them number one you are doing yourself a disservice because you will literally die of fatigue and exhaustion there is a reason why god gave the ability for grace to be distributed from one person to the other so that you are limited in terms of your assignment and then your body can be able to take it can take your spirit while you serve there are many people today who are literally dying of fatigue i would say the reason is because they are afraid of empowering and raising others jesus was not he said greater works there was one Jesus, but there are many witnesses. One Jesus, the faithful witness, but today there are many witnesses. I don't know how many of them are in this place, but I presume everyone under the sound of my voice. Witnesses, mandated and anointed to bear witness to the light. And there are many thousands and ten thousands of others following online. Witnesses, because Jesus said, greater works. Jesus met all kinds of people. He could rehabilitate their minds and prepare them to expect to receive salvation when all was said and done. But there was nobody, no mention of anybody receiving eternal life before Jesus died. He forgave sins. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. But that was impossible because sin is first a nature before an outworking. You can do your best using the principles of the Lord to stop the outworking. But that nature, the psalmist said, in sin, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Are we together? Greater works. Greater works. Hallelujah. There is what we can do that Jesus could not do before his death. Not as a result of limitations, but he had to subscribe to the protocol that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Today, we can stand and preach on the strength of what he has done and call many people to the cross and with joy and in a moment, that translation can happen from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. I think he was... 
Billy Graham of blessed memory. I listened to one of his profound crusades. This was a crusade that he held probably in the 80s. And he was diagnosing the true state, the cancer that man really needed to be healed of. And he made references to all kinds of sicknesses that plague men and the efforts being made by the then world you know of medical science to solve and to cure many problems and he said the greatest of them the cancer that really needed healing in the life of man was that cancer of separation from jesus christ hallelujah now what is the ultimate goal of greater works to what end is this agenda what is this about why is jesus insistent on the saints stepping into this dimension of greater works i wrote here and i want you to listen and write please the ultimate goal for greater works the ultimate goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of god fills the entire earth drawing many to jesus you see why i was profoundly blessed by the worship ministration of our precious people here that the entire goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of god that it fills the entire earth every nation every city every nook and cranny drawing many to jesus habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14. habakkuk 2 and verse 14. I want to appreciate you as you have watched this message and listened to it. And I want you to pray from your heart. And I want you to believe God for the miracle that is going to manifest in you. And I want you to also share this message. And also, if you have not subscribed, subscribe to this channel. That the Lord will richly bless you. Don't forget that we are preparing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If our Christianity only be on this earth, it will do us no good. That is why we are preparing and trying to use this medium to reach out to as many. So if you have not given your life to Christ, try to do so and live a faithful life and a winning life to the glory of God. May God keep you. May God bless you. As you have listened to his servant, Apostle Jesus Shama, God bless you.